Okay, okay, I know. Not everybody's interested in painting landscapes. I agree. I know the feeling. Um, when I started out, I wanted to learn how to paint a little bit of everything. Uh, landscapes, animals, still life, even flowers. And uh, for a long time, I thought, what are people going to think of this big strapping young man painting flowers? But I said, uh, flowers are beautiful. They're part of nature's creation. So I wanted to learn how to paint them. So thanks for stopping by. I'm Wilson Bickford. I'm going to show you how I paint roses. Um, every artist has their own bag of tricks as far as the techniques that they use for whatever it is they're painting, whether it's flowers or trees or anything else. I can only show you what I've learned and how I like to do mine. I'm, I'm going to use a black uh, canvas today that's primed with my black gesso medium. Uh, prior to that, I'm going to show you a little sample here on, the, uh, on this test canvas. Um, I'm using one of my panels today for the actual painting. It's just one of the Wilson Bickford Signature canvas panels. Um, would they have a medium tooth? They're good for all uh, applications. Um, primarily, the ma majority of this canvas today is going to be covered with this uh, number 10 flat brush. It's incredible what you can do with a flat brush if you know how to use it. Um, I'm going to give you a little test shot on this sample canvas right here first, just to give you a heads up what's coming. Um, on my palette, I have cadmium red deep, cadmium red light hue, a little bit of ivory black, sap green, emerald green hue, cadmium yellow pale hue, and titanium white. Um, I'm going to do red roses on this black background eventually here, but um, just prior to doing that, I want to give you a little primer on this uh, test canvas. I'm going to thin this down just a little bit. I've got some clear medium over here, my fast flow clear, Bickford fast flow clear medium, which I'll be putting on the black canvas um, prior to starting that. But roses are basically kind of a round shape. The, tr the key is they're basically round, not perfectly round. So if I get a, an idea of the size that I want, I simply pull in some of the outside petals. And they're going to be kind of scalloped and irregular. This is actually the mid-tone. Flowers are one of the few things that I actually start with the mid-tone rather than the darks. Most things you're starting with your dark tone and then layering highlights, mid-tones and highlights over that. These I actually start with the mid-tone. And there's a reason for that. It tends to work better that way. But see, that's starting to look like a flower already. And then on the inside, now this is a rose that is facing you right directly, full on. If I take a little bit of black into that mixture, I want to darken the inner core of that. And then I kind of blend it out. I want that to look deep. So you soften the perimeter of that. Blend it out. You could actually use a, a mop brush, something like this if you wanted. Usually I just use the number 10. You can use a nice soft mop brush like this and fuzz that edge out. From there, I'm going to wash the brush out and dry it off because I want to come back with my highlighting. Now highlights uh, on red, the general rule of thumb is to use something orange. Red is a really hard color to work with because you can't simply add white to it to get your highlight because if you do that, it turns pink and that'd be great if I was doing pink roses. It took me a long time to figure out that uh, you want to use something in the orange family. Now you could either add yellow to your red or you can just use an orange. Now see if I take some of this cad red light, even though it's classified as a red, it's a very orangey red. I'll use that for the highlighting. I'm going to pull this together and mat it out a little bit to a nice chiseled edge. This brush, this number 10 bristle brush of mine, and actually it's not a bristle brush, it's a synthet synthetic bristle, but this brush is actually just such a nice brush to work with. Now, if I come in and I just kind of touch with the end, you get those little foreshortened petals that you're actually seeing the end of. You're actually seeing the foreshortened edge of those. So I just kind of walk these around in the middle. They're usually quite full and clustered together. And then I do what I call an eyebrow st stroke, which looks like this. They're just little eyebrows. You start the stroke with less pressure. You increase pressure through the middle of the stroke and then come back skinny on the end of the stroke. And those are petals that are kind of starting to open up a little bit. And those kind of go around that little nucleus of the foreshortened ones. 
You see a flower blooming there? And I'm starting to see it myself. So you can take these out a little ways. You know, it's not too far, maybe a row or two. And then you're going to reach the outside edge. The outside petals on the very outside edge where you can just kind of come in like this. This is a pull away stroke which I'm pulling in and letting it fade off into the dark. The key is leaving that darker red tone between all your layers of petals. If you lose that, you lose all the depth within the flower. And see, now I can really come in and kind of accent these outer edges and get those little points on that roses are kind of noted for. Not every petal is pointed like that, but some of them I make sure that they are because that's kind of characteristic of roses. See, that flower is going to bloom right before your eyes. So basically, that's what I want to show you today um, on this black canvas. So I'll take that down. I'll probably bring this canvas back up when I get to the leaves and give you a little primer on those. So basically, I'm just going to take my two-inch scenery brush, and I, ha I have some of the Bickford Fast Flow Clear Medium here on the disposable palette down here. I want to wet this canvas down and just lubricate it a little bit, which will make the colors flow on a little easier, give me blendability. Doesn't take much, just a nice thin coat will do it. Something like that. And like I said, most of the painting is going to be done with this brush. This flat will cover a lot of turf. So I'm actually just going to rinse the brush out. And I'm going to start back in with that red that I had when I started that demo just a few minutes ago. I'm going to take some of the red. And when you're doing florals, you almost have to be a floral arranger. You can't just throw them on there. You have to think your composition. They talk about a C curve and a shallow S curve. So I'm thinking I'm going to have one of these big prima donna roses maybe right about here somewhere. So I just kind of find it on the canvas. I'm going to say that's going to be there. And if I went with a shallow S shape, I'm going to say that maybe there's going to be a bud up here somewhere like that, off center. And come down around and maybe one down here somewhere. Something like that. Now it's a real lazy S. It's not really an S, but you just don't line them up on top of each other. From there, now the buds are basically just a teardrop shape. So those are pretty simple. Now they're going to look a lot different once I put some highlighting on them. If you're doing tulips, they kind of start out the same way, same shape. You just do different things for the uh, highlighting and for the petal structure. Maybe something about like that. The big one is just like I showed you on the other canvas where I kind of pull from the outside in. Get that irregular scallop shape. Now this background looks pretty flat because it is. It's just flat black. So I'm going to change that here momentarily. I'll put a little bit of accent color in there before I go too far. It's easier to put that in now rather than later when I got all my stems and leaves and stuff in. See, I just kind of base that in like that. I know that rose is going to get a little bigger as I develop the outside edges. So that's not a big deal. I'm going to go back with that touch of black and some of the red like I did before. I'm going to make sure that's a little darker. Sometimes I use a little purple. Just something a little darker. I want the inside of that flower to look like it has depth. And I'll come back to this mop brush. Remember this from the last time? Just kind of fade that out a little bit, smooth it down. Because we got a lot of paint to put over the top of that. There we go. So far, so good, huh? Um, I'm thinking, uh, just in the interest of uh, visual appeal, I'm going to take a little bit of this red. Now, this is going to look awful for a minute. Hang with me. A lot of times it's very common to take your floral color, whatever flowers you're doing, if they're yellow or blue or red or whatever the case might be, and you incorporate a little bit of that into your background. It doesn't look like much now, but you wait till we get done. It'll show up a little better 
You just want to tie your background into your subject. And probably by the time I get some of the green leaves going, I'll put a little touch of that green in the background as well. Now I'm going to soften that out. I don't want it quite so choppy and harsh as that. So I'll come back with my mop brush once again and just kind of fuzz that in a little bit. See how it makes the background look like it's not so flat and solid like the flat black was? It just opens it up a little bit and it kind of ties everything together, gives you color harmony. Alrighty.